Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to show you my favourite features of iPad OS 16 and how it changes the way I use my iPad. Now these are not all of the iPad OS features, I'm just going to talk about the best and most useful ones in my opinion. If you're new to my channel, I love to use my iPad for digital planning, journaling and drawing and without a doubt, my favourite feature of iPad OS 16 is being able to cut out images from photos. My favourite app for digital planning and journaling is GoodNotes app and I've been using the freeform crop tool in GoodNotes to manually crop out parts of photos. Now, unless you have super stable hands and I do not, you'll probably find that your cropped images have uneven edges and I typically find myself cropping the same image several times before it looks semi-decent. With the new update, you can go into your photos or files and simply tap and hold on the object and it will automatically lift the object out of the photo. And then you can use it in apps like GoodNotes, Procreate, Messages or any app with photo format support. You can either copy and paste the cutout or you can drag and drop it directly onto the other app. When you long press on the photo, it shows you the cutout lines or you can also move your finger around like this to see what the cutout looks like. This feature also works in videos. Here I've paused on a video in my camera roll and you can press and hold to lift the object out of the background. I love this feature for digital planning and journaling because I can quickly add cropped images onto my page. There are some limitations to this feature. It doesn't cut out perfectly all of the time. I tested this and you can see the quality of the cutout varies depending on the photo. Sometimes the edges are not clean and if you've got more than one object or person in the photo, it's not possible to choose which one to cut out. But overall, I really like this feature and I can see myself using this a lot, especially for digital journaling. I plan to use it together with the hand crop tool to get the best cutout. You can also cut out directly from web images in Safari. To do this, just long press on the image and tap on copy subject and then you can paste into other apps. Another cool related feature is being able to remove background from photos and images. If you go into your files and long press on an image, tap on quick actions and remove background and it will create the cutout as a duplicate image. I can see this feature being really useful for making your photos and images into transparent stickers for digital planning and journaling. The next feature I'm going to talk about is Stage Manager. This is a new feature that allows you to multitask using up to four apps. And you can turn this on by dragging your finger from the top right of the screen and toggle on the new Stage Manager icon. You can resize the windows by dragging the corner, which allows you to go from full screen to a small window and anything in between. And to open up a second window, you can tap on the three dots at the top of the window and choose Open New Window, and it will prompt you to choose another app. You can also open a new window by dragging the app icon from the bottom menu and drop it onto the screen. You can resize any window to fit the screen and you can flip between the different apps by tapping on the window. And you can rearrange them by dragging the top of the window and dropping it elsewhere on the screen. If you have more than four apps, they start going into this side panel and you can just bring them back by dragging and dropping them again. I initially found the stage manager feature a little clunky to use, but you'll get the hang of it quickly. And I think this feature will be very useful for multitasking across different apps. For example, with digital planning, you can drag and drop items from your digital planner over to the calendar app and reminder app without having to close one and open another. You can drag and drop photos and stickers directly from apps like Procreate, Photos and Cloud Storage. You can even open up the same app in a second window. So here I've got my planner in GoodNotes and my digital sticker book also in GoodNotes in another window. And this makes it really convenient because I can see both at the same time and I can be in edit mode in one window and view mode in the other. When you want to close a window, you can swipe from the bottom and swipe the app away to close it. If you tap the stage manager icon again, you can hide the side and bottom panels to get more screen space. You can also go into settings and change your display zoom to more space and this will make the side and bottom panels smaller to give you more working space. I can see this feature being very useful especially when external display support is released later this year and you can then link your iPad to a bigger monitor to give you even more space to multitask. You could previously copy text from photos and with the new update you can also do this with videos. Here I'm in my camera roll and I've paused on a video. You can just long press on the text and copy or drag this into other apps. And this is really useful if you find something in a video that you want to save. Instead of taking a screenshot, you can just grab the information directly. If you long press on a measurement, it also shows you the different conversions, which is super helpful. You can also translate foreign text in videos and that works with videos of text on objects as well. 
There's now web link recognition in videos, so if you pause the video and tap on the icon at the bottom, you can open up the web page. With the new update, there's some cool new features for photo editing and management. You can make edits to a particular photo and then copy and paste those edits over to other photos. To do this, just select the photo with the edits, tap on copy edits, then select the other photos and paste edits. I like to make my photos brighter, so I think this feature will be a big time saver. Another useful feature is being able to remove duplicate images. With the Photos app, if you go to the duplicate section, this will show you all of the duplicate images that look the same. And you can choose to merge a set of images, or you can select them all and merge in one go. The Notes app has gotten some cool new pens. There's now a watercolor brush that looks pretty good, I think. And there's also this fountain brush, which is great for lettering. Although I use GoodNotes app for most of my note taking, I like to use the Notes app for making quick notes, and these new pens are great additions to have. If you make handwritten notes, you can select some handwriting and choose to straighten it, although I found this only works if the handwriting isn't too wonky to begin with. The new update automatically adds punctuation to dictation, so you no longer have to add it manually. This makes the feature a lot more useful, and I can see myself using it for note-taking, emails, and digital journaling. I'll definitely still be using my Bluetooth keyboards for typing, but this feature is very convenient for quick notes and for when I'm out and don't have a keyboard with me. Now you can also insert emojis by dictation by saying happy emoji, sad emoji, dog emoji, you can also switch between dictation and the keyboard without having to stop dictation. I believe it's supposed to work with the Apple Pencil as well, but I haven't managed to get it working for me. I love to customize my iPad home screen with widgets, so I'm happy to see the weather app come over to the iPad, which allows me to have this weather widget on my home screen, even though it doesn't have any customization features yet. I made an entire video on iPad customization, so check that out if you'd like to learn more. You can now set focus filters with focus mode, which lets you further customize how apps behave when you're in a particular focus. For example, not seeing your work calendar when you're in relaxation mode. The downside of iPad OS 16 is that some of the features only work on certain iPads, so my 2017 iPad Pro was missing some features, and because of that, I've had to borrow this iPad from a friend to be able to make this video. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video useful, subscribe to my channel for more, and check out my other videos in the meantime. Thanks for watching!